Hello, Opulent Disarray here. Let's talk about BDSM. I've delayed on this for far too long. I've always found some reason to procrastinate on this, doing something else, and I was just avoiding it. When this is something that's pretty close to me, and something that I think is important. And I guess I should say that I'm a submissive male. I was always submissive. I just never realized it until later in life. And for a long time, I was ashamed of it. But I didn't want to let that fear stop me from talking about it. Because BDSM is taboo. No one talks about this because they're afraid that someone will judge them because of it. And I know that a future employer might see this video or my confession video and choose not to employ me. But I think that this is important enough that I would take that risk a million times over. BDSM is not about inflicting or receiving pain. It's not about whips, gags, collars or restraints. Beyond anything, it's about trust. It's about trusting your partner enough to allow yourself to be vulnerable in front of them about being cared about and wanted by someone else for both the submissive and the dominant, which seems paradoxical. However, a submissive cares for a dominant as much as a dominant cares for a submissive because they help each other fulfill their desires. When it comes down to it, I guess BDSM to me is this feeling of being wanted, to be cared about by someone else that's core to every human being, to want to be loved by someone else and to reciprocate that feeling. As a submissive male, it's just sometimes I would like someone else to take the reins off of me, to take control away from me, even for a moment, because I don't feel strong enough. I feel inadequate. I feel weak. I've always felt like no one could ever care about me. It's this wish that someone else would genuinely care about me, but more importantly, to care about someone else, something that everyone wants. As with all relationships, you should always think about what you can give into the relationship. Submissive males and all members in the BDSM community get a bad name when they don't think about what the other party wants and they don't take their needs into consideration. You should always think about how you can help someone else. And submission-wise, the idea of tying someone up or giving someone a collar is the fantasy that someone would care about you enough to hold you captive or make you their property. That's what BDSM means to me. Real BDSM is a loving and caring relationship which means something different to everyone. I myself know that I am a submissive, but there are people who are both submissive and dominant, who are referred to as switches. It really depends upon the person as to what they like. For example, I just don't like latex. I hate how shiny it is, how skin tight it is, and I just can't handle it. I really dislike the stereotypical latex bodysuit, which you would see in porn for female dominatrixes. And here's the thing, real BDSM doesn't need any of that. Yes, it can be a part of it, but it doesn't have to be. And I'm aware of the negative connotations of being a submissive male. It's not masculine for a male to submit. A male can't be weak. A male can't let himself be vulnerable because it's not manly to do so. Well, sometimes I cry whilst reading romance novels, craving that intimacy, that idea that someone might actually care about someone like me. You're gay. No, I'm not. And there's nothing wrong with being gay. Also, being gay has no relation to liking romance novel novels. Reading romance novels doesn't reflect how masculine you are. Yeah, I do like romance novels, but so what? Is it okay to be a submissive male? Well, yes. I feel like I can't 
answer that question because to say no would be insulting me. But who says it's not manly to submit? What kind of stupid notion said that men cannot allow themselves to be vulnerable? I admit I have fallen victim to these prejudices as well because I was afraid of talking about things like this. And this applies equally to both men and women. It's difficult to talk about things such as emotions, no matter who you are. I've heard people say that you have to be an alpha male because women are programmed to like aggressive, dominant men. But based on what? Men and women like different people depending upon who they are. And saying that they are programmed to like a specific type of person is wrong and disrespectful. Also, being a submissive does not automatically mean you'll be shy and roll over to everyone and vice versa for a dominant. Because people can think. And from personal experience, I know that it would only be with someone who I really trust and felt comfortable with that I would be submissive. And even then, not all the time. I know that there are very few female dominatrixes. There are way more male dominatrixes and female submissives because it's more traditional. Most women just don't like submissive males, and I know that. But there are so many more things which determine a relationship, such as shared interests and hobbies, and BDSM is only one part of that equation. But how about, how does the dynamic between a dominant and submissive in a BDSM relationship even work? It's about communication talking about what you want and what you don't like, and fulfilling what your partner wants. And during sex and any form of play, it's about constantly checking if this is what your partner wants and what they like doing, and to check if they're okay and want to continue. Communication is key. I know that, and I've never had sex. And there's a misunderstanding in most forms of media who talk about BDSM, because it's largely focused on the submissive disobeying the dominant and getting punished. Yes, punishment may be part of a BDSM scene, however, a submissive doesn't intentionally disobey a dominant to get punished. I think that novels and other creative mediums still have trouble reconciling submissive, especially submissive males, because People just feel submission by itself is not interesting enough, and especially that males being weak is not acceptable. They have difficulty with reconciling an image of men and women being vulnerable and helpless with how they are seen in stories. They won't breach that intimacy, which I think is something beautiful. Then again, I'm a submissive male, so I'm biased in that regard. What I mean by this, and this especially applies to submissive males, is that submissive males constantly try to disobey their mistresses in fiction and are depicted to be alpha males who struggle for control over their mistresses. Now, I'm not saying that's not a thing. There are people who are very well off and in positions of renown who during their daily lives have to be assertive, but enjoy submission. Also, disobeying a dominant might be a form of BDSM play that people, some people might enjoy. I don't know, I, I really don't. However, generally, unless agreed upon otherwise, submission involves giving over control to a dominant and allowing yourself to be vulnerable. Constantly disobeying a dominant unless you enjoy that, is not making yourself vulnerable and opening yourself up to the dominant. The point I'm trying to get at is true submission is sexy, if only to a few people. And that form of submission is rarely seen in creative mediums because it's seen as not interesting enough. Being able to genuinely submit to someone and put your heart in their hands takes a lot of courage. And this applies to women as well, but 
to a lesser extent because it is generally more accepted that women can be submissive to men and not the other way around. But you have to ask, Disarray, how would you know about BDSM? You haven't even participated in a BDSM scene in real life before, have you? I haven't, and you're right. And I, c- I can tell you, it's probably disappointing given how much novels tend to romanticize things. Also, a warning, I have to say that BDSM in real life has to be done with a lot of care, especially with things such as restraints, safe words, and immediate communication the moment someone starts to feel uncomfortable, because it can be dangerous if it's done so without the appropriate knowledge and experience. Safe words are for communication, and in case there's a gag, people generally choose to hold an object in their hands, and if it's dropped, the scene stops immediately with no exceptions. This facilitates, this facilitation of communication is crucial, not only in BDSM, but any intimate scene, and it extends to some of the other practices in BDSM, such as aftercare, in which partners talk about what they liked and didn't like, and be affectionate to one another after a BDSM scene to bond and connect more closely. But on the whole, I, I don't know, I, I really don't, because I don't have that experience, but that's what being submissive is about from my perspective. It's not about equipment or hurting someone else. It's about trusting someone else to love you and also loving them as well. And that's about it. This was weird. It's, it's hard sharing things which are so personal. And I won't lie, I'm scared, but that's okay. I hope this helped you understand a little bit more about BDSM. I wanted to talk about it because no one else will, because it's so difficult to talk about, but I don't want other people to be ashamed of it. BDSM is just another way of fulfilling our human desires in a safe, consensual way and wanting to care for each of each other. Thank you for being here. You are my lifeblood. Thank you for at least listening. I wanted to be as honest and open with you as possible. So here it is. It's you, ladies and gentlemen, that allow me to do this, to talk to you so honestly. You are what makes me strong. Opulent Disarray, out.